Breaking right now our top story, a massive power outage plunging into Venezuela into darkness. Blackouts all over the country. They've become completely routine, uh, I should say, in this country. But this one is different. This one is different because it is a complete breakdown of the electrical grid power system. And it's impacting nearly all of the country's 23 states. The consequences more than 24 hours into this are already severe. We have learned tonight that the country's main morgue in Caracas is totally full and can no longer take bodies. The regime of socialist dictator Nicolas Maduro is trying to pin the blame for the quote electricity war, that's what he calls it, on the United States and specifically Senator Marco Rubio. But the real reason some 30 million Venezuelans are in the dark tonight, corruption, socialism. In the last decade, $100 billion has been invested in the country's electrical grid. Well, that's socialism. That led to the mismanagement of that money. It led to corruption, and it led to the outright stealing of that money, resulting in the darkness you see happening there tonight, in the deaths you see happening there tonight. The man the United States and the rest of the free world recognizes as the president of Venezuela, Juan Guaido, he was supposed to be here right now, right here on this show. But he has no power in his home. In fact, I spent most of the afternoon trying to make that interview happen. But without power, there's not a lot you can do, right? And this is the reality of Venezuela right now. There's no power. There's no Wi-Fi. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo put it like this. No food, no medicine, now, no power. Next, no Maduro. Joining me right now, former U.S. Army Special Forces and current counterintelligence expert, president of the Security Studies Group, Mr. Jim Hansen. Jim, wow, I, you know, as I said, this is different than the rolling power outages that they might have had before to save electricity. This is just a massive failure of the entire electrical grid system. How did this happen? Well, you kind of have to wonder whether it is just corruption and incompetence and, and bad management, or whether Maduro took advantage of that and maybe added a little bit to it to create the false flag idea that he's promoting that the U.S. is behind this. Because it's a classic move by dictators and, and others to stir up nationalism to try and rally their people by saying there's an external force that's trying to take over, in this case, the U.S. Mm -hmm. so it and by the way, he was very quick him. to do that. He was very quick. Uh, he did that. Delcy Rodriguez, I saw a video of her doing that, actually pointing mm -hmm. the finger at Marco Rubio. But uh, I would add that, you know, the power, uh, the power plants, the grids, et cetera, the, they're, they're heavily protected in Venezuela and they're run effectively by the army. So it would be very difficult for an outsider to penetrate that anyway. Um, yet that is the story he's spinning. Do you believe that Venezuelans will actually believe that? Or do you think they're going to look at this and say, wow, this just proves how awful this government has been and how much we do need change? I think some people will believe it, but he's, he's got a certain amount of followers who believe anything he says. And if we had wanted to, we could take down power lines. You can't guard the whole transmission system. Like you said, you can guard certain parts of it. But I mean, come on, Maduro has also blamed iguanas for some of these blackouts that have happened previously. So his credibility on this is kind of low. Yeah, I he think also believes that Hugo Chavez comes to him, <laughs> takes right. him to the future and then back. I should point that one out, too. So he's got some lines. Um, you know, look, he is a dictator. He's trying to spin whatever he can right now. But the reality of the situation is you have people in hospitals that can't get oxygen because there's no backup generator in those public hospitals to actually feed those oxygen machines and have the electricity working. You're looking at pictures there of a hospital in Caracas right now uh, where you see the blackout. You see that they have no electricity. Uh, babies that need neonatal care are dying. Mm -hmm. And as I reported, the Morgan Caracas can't take any more bodies. Um, Jim, yeah. it, it, you know, at what point does this become the thing uh, that really tips the country in the direction of something new? At what point does Nicolas Maduro go? 
Well, I think this shows that his, his depravity and his lack of care for his own people uh, is just beyond the pale. Now, the question is, does that spur internal revolt, which it very well could, the military could turn against him, you know, his own people could, or we recognize Guaido as the actual leader of the country, the, the recognized we leader. We but have. we could now, given this humanitarian crisis, he could call for international relief to okay. come in and help fix the grid, well, I'm glad to you fix brought the that electricity. Up because uh, <laughs> I've spent a lot of time looking at the Venezuelan Constitution, <laughs> probably more mm -hmm. than most people. And there's a particular article, I believe it's uh, 187, uh, part 11 there, uh, and, and we can put it up for the viewer. It says. It shall be the function of the National Assembly to authorize the operation of Venezuelan military missions abroad or foreign military missions within the country. Do you think that the Assembly needs to call on the world and say, we need you, we need foreign military intervention, our people need it? I think if anything so far has justified it, this certainly does. You know, you've got so many people now who are, are literally dying. You know, it's been life and death. There have been problems. There's been starvation. But this is a very acute crisis. And it's the kind of thing that if it doesn't tip the, the balance internally, may tip the balance externally and be the right reason for a, an external uh, force to come in and fix this. I want to point out that you know a lot of Venezuelans have communicated with me via social media, via Twitter, on Facebook, and there was a lot of concern last night about that communication shutting down. For example, people couldn't charge their cell phones; uh, they had no power to do so. And you have to wonder, um, with Nicolas Maduro, is that what he's trying to do? because we had already gotten reports of him shutting down YouTube, including uh, versions of this show that had been shared on YouTube, and trying to shut down parts of Twitter. The Iranians have done it. The Chinese have done it. Many totalitarian regimes find the first thing you want to do to stop internal opposition is kill their ability to communicate. So I think it makes perfect sense from his perspective. He pressures the people. He shows them who's in charge. He stops them from communicating to each other. And they have no alternative other than him. That's why this may be the, the tipping point that says it's time for someone to come in and rescue the Venezuelan people from someone who, who cares nothing about them. They need some help. Jim, thank you very much.